Hello, I'm Maruk Said, your microbiology guide. Let's explore in-depth micro techniques and uncover groundbreaking insights together on this educational journey into the fascinating realms of microbes. Hello, everyone. Today, we're diving into an essential concept in microbiology, the colony forming unit, CFU. Isolated colonies on an agar plate, like the ones you see here, are the foundation of all bacteriological analyses we perform to identify and characterize microorganisms. But what exactly is a colony? What is a CFU? And how does a microscopic organism grow into a visible population? Let's break it down. If you have watched till here, don't forget to subscribe to Family of Science Lovers. Press the bell icon button so you are always updated. What is a colony? When we observe bacterial colonies on a plate, such as an E. coli culture growing on eosin methylene blue, EMB agar, what we see with our naked eye is not a single organism. It's an entire clonal population. If we zoom in on a colony repeatedly, we would find that it consists of a homogeneous population of bacteria. These colonies descend from a single viable progenitor organism known as the colony forming unit. CFU. How does a CFU become a colony? Bacteria are incredibly small, but under ideal conditions, a single CFU can double every 20 minutes. Over 24 hours, this exponential growth results in a population large enough to form a colony visible to the naked eye. Here's a simplified scenario. We start with a sample containing bacteria. After plating this sample on agar, individual bacterial cells grow into distinct colonies. Each colony represents the descendants of one CFU, forming a pure culture. This purity is vital for laboratory work as it ensures we study and characterize a single organism at a time. Understanding CFUs also helps us estimate the bacterial concentration in a sample. Here's how. Dilution series. We dilute the original sample in a stepwise manner, reducing the bacterial concentration with each dilution. Plating. We plate these diluted samples onto agar. Initially, we see confluent growth, a dense lawn of bacteria. As the dilution increases, we begin to see isolated colonies. Counting colonies. At a specific dilution, we count the colonies. For example, at a 1 in 10 to the minus 6 dilution, we might count 14 colonies. Why is this important? CFUs are a cornerstone of bacteriology. They allow us to quantify and isolate pure cultures for detailed study. Whether you're working in research, diagnostics, or food safety. CFUs help ensure accuracy and reliability in microbial analysis. Advantages of CFU. Provides an estimate of viable microorganisms. Allows identification based on colony morphology. Quantitative and reproducible when standard protocols are followed. Limitations of CFU. Time-consuming, 24 to 48 hours or more for incubation. Only cultivable organisms are detected. Misrepresentation due to clustering of cells. One cluster equals one CFU. If you haven't watched my previous video on how to do serial dilution and the spread plate method, I recommend checking it out first. That procedure lays the foundation for this step. Today, we'll analyze colony morphology and calculate colony forming units. For this procedure, we'll need the following a notebook and pen, semi-permanent marker, resulting plates from dilution factor. Here, I have 10 to the power of negative three. Ten to the power of negative four. And 10 to the power of negative five an automated colony counter, if available. Let's start by understanding colony-forming units, CFU. There are two ways to count colonies, 
using an automated colony counter. This is quick and precise. Or manual counting, the method most labs use due to limited resources. We'll demonstrate manual counting today. On the notebook, write the heading colony forming unit calculations at the top. Then, write today's date. This helps keep track of when the experiment was performed. Next, note down the dilution factors. 10 to the power of negative 3, 10 to the power of negative 4, and 10 to the power of negative 5. This ensures everything is clear and organized before starting the calculations. To start with manual counting, we'll take the 10 to the power of negative 5 plate and divide it into four quadrants using a ruler. Label each quadrant as 1, 2, 3, and 4. This method ensures that no colony is missed during the count. Now, count all colonies in each quadrant, including small and minute ones. Write the numbers in your notebook or directly on the plate. Quadrant 1, 21 colonies. Quadrant 2, 28 colonies. Quadrant 3, 16 colonies. Quadrant 4, 15 colonies. The total number of colonies for this 10 to the power of negative 5 plate is 80. Repeat this process for the other plates. For 10 to the power of negative 4, the total colonies are 133. For 10 to the power of negative 3, the total colonies are 168. Remember, only consider plates with 30 to 300 colonies for accurate CFU calculations. Now let's calculate colony forming units, CFU, using this formula. Colony forming unit equals number of colonies multiplied by Diltuian factor, then divided by volume of culture plated in milliliter or microliter. For the 10 to the power of negative five plate, colony forming unit equals 80 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative five, then divided by 0.03 milliliters or 30 microliter. Answer is 266,666,667 CFU ML. For the 10 to the power of negative four plate, colony forming unit equals 133 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative four, then divided by 0.03 milliliters or 30 microliter. Answer is 44,333,333 CFU ML. For the 10 to the power of negative three plate, colony forming unit equals 168 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative three, then divided by 0.03 milliliters or 30 microliter. Answer is 5,600,000 CFU ML. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, press the bell icon button. Thank you.